The time has come. We have lost Crimson Lion Cub Kirf in Premium Ezel coming this September 20th. So, to make up for it, we're gonna have to run Crimson Lion Cub Kirf instead. Let's explain why the deck has not changed at all for the most part. So, yes, there's been a slight bit of changes just to make up for consistency, but as far as how the deck performs, it's basically the same. So, Ezel just got a little slap on the wrist there from the little ban list they provided, and Ichikashima is dead, so we can run our draw PGs to the max. So our starter is Crimson Lion Cub Kirif. When you ride upon it, you draw a card. Cool. Next up, we're going with Grade Threes. We're running four copies of Incandescent Lion Blonde Ezel. So Blonde Ezel was already at four, so I wasn't too worried about having to, you know, run Bowman and Ezel in my hand at the same time. And I can't tell you how many times in the games I played against Gabe before the ban list that I already had Blonde Ezel in my hand to begin with that I was saving for Ultima Stride. So like it's fine and then in the games that we did play that i will hopefully get uploaded soon um i had blonde Ezel like 90 percent of the time in my opening hand or i drew into it somehow in some way so the superior writing in the blonde Ezel is pretty much the same you don't have a bunch of soul which is kind of a little bit of an issue because you can't just go aggro with sagamores and just soul blast and draw a bunch of stuff which is cool and all but you can still play wonder Ezel which is still perfectly functional um, for whatever reason, but she didn't want to hit that, but I'm happy. So we don't really care for Blonde Ezel's skill it's other than the Superior Ride, so uh, we're just going to jump right into Raven Hair Ezel. So three copies of new Raven Hair and one copy of old Raven Hair. Yes, uh, you can run four copies of the new Raven Hair to keep the gifts going, but I like to keep my premium games a little spicy, so I run the one copy of Old Raven Hair. So, new Raven Hair is if you have Vanguard Blonde Ezel, you counter blast one, ride it as Stan, and when it attacks, if you have Blonde and Soul, you counter blast one, and it gets 10, 15k and a crit, can't guard with Sentinels. Card comp, that ability actually comes in handy sometimes, just because if you know your opponent has Sentinels and they got like four in hand, and you can just like call Wonder Ezel, Superior so Ride in this, give it 5k, call it. Gareth behind it, give it another 10k, make the column like 50k, and they can't guard. And then you got the the crits that are moved to soul, give your vanguard 10k, so you got two of those, and you make it like 70k. Like, it, it can happen, so still a really good effect. This card's a spicy boy. What he does is limit break 5. Uh, when this unit is placed on van by riding over a grade 3 Ezel, uh, this unit gains 10k, and for the turn, uh, your opponent cannot call cards other than grade ones so it stops grade zero pgs and it stops uh sentinel gifts so stops protect gifts which is cool I gotta admit that's pretty cool and uh being that they can only guard with grade ones uh from hand uh means that uh the battle door skill which is comes with, with turtle is pretty dope because that means if they want to guard with Tumor, they have to drop those grade ones with 10k shield, so they'll have to overguard maybe just to protect um, their Vanguard. And then those triggers that are in their hand, they're dead. Unless they're heal triggers, because they can still G guard. But the card stops 15k, sh tr 15k shield triggers and it stops other effects. It's a guard restrict. <laughs> it's good. Uh, one copy. Of Bla SVR, Blazing Lion Platina Ezel. So, why am I running this card at 1? Because I want to. And it's an Ezel, and it's searchable because Wonder Ezel. It's still at 4. And it has a gift, so that's cool. So, Wonder Ezel is spicy, because what you can do is you can ride it. Uh, you can use its skill if you have two grade 3s in the soul to counterblast 1 and change the first, second, and third drive checks into red text. Look at the top two cards of your deck, reveal one, put it in a trigger zone, and call the other the rear. So if you do this, you counterblast, then you counterblast two, and you go into Spear X, and that means that when you triple drive, you're going to call three things, and you're going to look and see what triggers you want to trigger check. 
sounds inconsistent, but it's fun as hell, and that's all I care about. So I'm running the one Platina Ezel. And I have one SVR anyway, so might as well use it, right? So that's the fun part with that. If I do have to just ride it just to ride to get a gift, it's an Ezel card with a gift. Why not? Still pretty cool. I'm a fan. And next up, we're only running three copies of Sagamore, sadly. Used to be at four, but because we got a little bit of like a a soul issue, but I wouldn't say issue because there's so many ways to still soul charge in this deck and gain soul that um, it's fine. But I also don't want to kind of like turbo it too quick. So, I mean, it's honestly just as fine. You can take take out Platino, run a fourth Sagamore. The deck doesn't change, so it's fine. Sagamore skill is when it's placed from hand. You Soul Blast one, draw a card, call a card from your hand. So multi-attacking. It's not really multi-attacking. It's mostly just to build a field in hand and a proc dindrain. All right, next up. Uh, MVP of the deck, which is four copies of uh, Bowman. There we go. It's kind of stuck together. So Bowman's skill is when it's placed from hand, you discard a card and search for Gareth. So this was broken with Kirif because you would just draw Bowman, ride it, search Gareth, and then you immediately superior road. It was a lot of fun, and I'm already missing it because I had such a blast with that deck. The other skills when it's placed by card ability gets 3k. Um, you still want to ride this. 100% you still want to ride this. This is the go-to ride target. You don't want to ride anything else. Uh, because you want to superior ride into Ezel, and then you want to call Wonder Ezel, or use the Raven in your hand to superior ride, uh, get the Twin Drive back, or you just want to be on grade 3 ASAP, just in case your opponent critted you and you have 2 damage face up, and you can stride into Spear X because you're on grade 3. So you still want a superior ride in this deck. Next up for grade 2s is the card that I'm so happy they didn't hit because if they did, I don't know how to play this deck anymore. It's so autopilot. Um, when this is placed on rear, if your Vanguard's a grade 3 Ezel, you search for an Ezel, ride it, and that card gets 5k. And since you're riding, you get a gift. And since you get a gift, if you choose Excel 2, you get to draw a card. So, and then if you draw a card, you can draw onto Wonder Ezel and you can do it again, right, Gabe? <laughs> um, so, Wonder Ezel is a great card. Run it at 4. Please run this card at four. Lastly, for grade twos, we're only running 10 grade twos because they don't want to ride, run too many grade twos because they still want to just focus on Bowman. But the turtle is too good, so we got to run it at, at least two. So, Rampage Turtle's skill is during the battle that it attacks, if you have more rear guards than your opponent, when your opponent would have to call Guardians in their hand, they have to call two or more. So, it's Battle Door skill. Um, and. It combos really well with Raven. It combos amazingly with Ultima because you just search it out, call it to a rear, and you give a bunch of triggers to those columns, and then your opponent has to guard with two or more. And uh, it's just a really, really good card, and I'm really glad I'm, I'm running it. So that's about it for grade twos. Next up is grade ones. We are running four copies of Dindrain. Dindrain used to be at three. Um, but since we're not running the white lion combo anymore, it's just a lot harder now that you have to have Blondezel as the fifth piece of the perfect stride while your opponent's at grade one combo. It's just not worth it. So we just kind of ditched white lion completely and we're just focusing on Dindrain and Gareth and making consistency. So Dindrain skills, when it's placed by card ability, you can soul blast one, draw a card, or counter charge and gain 3k. I usually use it mostly for the draw effect just because it's pretty easy to get off. Um, you do have to kind of watch your soul a little bit if you don't see cards like Hoel or the the Theodora, the crit that moves itself to soul when your vanguard attacks uh, and drawing a card afterwards. So got to kind of watch that a little bit. But of course, if you can drop these down and increase another card as well, and it works just fine. But Dinvin's a good card. You want to see it, so we run four. Next up, we're running three copies of Gareth. We were originally only running two because we just needed it for the superior ride. But since we don't have four runner anymore, uh, sometimes when your opponent's vanguard's on an 8k base, you gotta ride that 8k and swing at them. And then the problem that I always feared was if I ride Gareth and then I damage check the other one, I'm screwed. 
So I run a third copy just in case I damage the second one and I can still search it out with Bowman. So run in three Gareth. Gareth skills when it's placed by a card ability, counterblast one, it gets 10k. So it's still good to search it out with Ultima as well if you put it behind a turtle or put it anywhere basically. So still a good card, but I'd only run it at three. Next up, because we got a little bit of a soul issue, but not too bad, uh, two copies of the old Crimson Lion Beast Hoel. So Hoel goes if you have a Vanguard with Ezel in its name, you counter charge and soul charge. So you're getting resources and soul, which is also a resource. So that was just redundant. Um, only running it at two, because again, not too big of an issue to worry about soul. Since the only things that Soul Blast are just Sagamore and Dindrain and Ezel. So, nah, they're kind of fine. Uh, the counter charge is good. The only thing is that the only reason I'm running it too is it is a 5k shield grade 1, only has 7k base. And if I call it out with Ultima, I have to Soul Charge, meaning I lose the trigger. So I want better grade 1 targets, basically. Speaking of better grade 1 targets, we're running two copies of Knight of Morning Light Horsa. Yes, I got this idea from that one list that topped in Japan on Twitter. And I tried it out and I liked it. So I'm running Horsa now. So Horsa skills GB1 Unite, if you don't remember from previous videos. Uh, when your other unit is placed on rear, this unit and another unit in the same column get 2k. So the whole point of this card is to make this column, you know? You just make this big and just go for it. So you can make, and also making any column big is also pretty dope. So, but the most part, it's mostly these two put together. And since um, Ultima lets you search for anything, if you already have Turtle in hand, you can just use Ultima to search out Horsa as one of your call targets. So it's a search target for Ultima, and it's still really good with Turtle. Uh, so I want to run two Horsa. Uh, if you don't, uh, I'll talk about substitutions right now real quick. These, these cards are the ones I would say if you're worried about stride fodder and you want to be able to stride more often. Uh, first, I'd say drop the Hoel for the stride fodder since Horsa is just really good uh, with anything for the most part. But if you find that you need the Hoel for the soul and the counter charge and you're like, I need the counter charge and I need the soul, you can drop the Horsa for the stride fodder. That's fine. But that means that your only good boosting target is basically going to be Gareth. So you kind of have to keep that in mind to about your rear guards being big in their numbers. So, But for now, no stride fodder. We are running 12 grade threes, so I think we'll be fine. On to the triggers. Uh, four copies of Player of the Holy Chord Theodora from the Premium Collection. So Generation Break 1, when your Vanguard attacks, move to Soul, draw a card, and your Vanguard gets 10k. Good with any G unit. Goes really well with um, Raven Hair Dazzle because it's got the Sentinel Guard Restrict. And uh, it's good with Glorious Raining because you can swing with it, move to Soul, and then you opened up space for call targets. So it's Scarface, but for V Series, basically. Kind of. No, it is literally is just for V Series. Uh, we're going to keep going with the crits. I'm running three copies of Flame of Victory. I like Flame of Victory. You can. Probably mix and match. You can do one of each trigger if you want from V series since we got twelve, you know, three different standard crits now. And I'm running the one copy of Gigantic Ringer. It's just for Ultima for the most part because Ultima puts the trigger effects everywhere. So if you swing with all of your rear guards first, then swing with Ultima, you get you reveal the stand trigger. It effect goes off and you stand all your rear guards. So you stand those those. Golden Beast, Rampage Turtles, and your Excels. It just makes for a really good finisher, and it's fun. Uh, it also procs well with um, Spear Axe. It goes well with Glorious Raining. It's a fun tech. And since you're running crits, you're usually going to swing with rear and then van anyway, so if you get off a stand trigger, cool. You get to re-stand a rear guard. So I like it at the one. I wouldn't run more than one just because it only gets 5k for the trigger power, and 5k triggers kind of if you have to limit them down you want to so just the one is fine uh, next up because Ichikoshima is 100% dead uh, coming September 20th I think that's the ban list date 
uh, we could run our draw PGs in peace and harmony, meaning we can just superior your PG with Slamy Flare as much as we want, just normal PG if we want, and it's a draw trigger, and draw triggers are always nice because you can damage check them and draw cards during your opponent's turn. So we're going to run four Halo Shield Mark. Next up, I changed up my uh, trigger lineup a little bit for heals just because I thought of something from playtesting that kind of came up a lot. So real quick, it's the two V-Series Elixir Sommelier and the two copies of Shaggy Rabbit. Uh, I was originally running just the four Elixir because I said to myself, there's no counter charge issue with this deck because you have Din Drain and you have Howell for counter charge. You don't need Shaggy Rabbit. So what I realized was that a lot of times I would have the setup for Ultima to win the next turn, and, but I would only have the one damage face up and I'd be at like three damage and I would say, okay, my opponent just has to attack my Vanguard and I can meet Ultima requirements. But my opponent knows that too. So what they'll purposely do is they'll purposely set it up in a way where if I take the Vanguard, it'll be more of a disadvantage to take that damage or they'll attack my rear guards and not give me the damage. So I can't, basically you're gonna try and make it so I cannot use Ultima the next turn. So Shaggy Rabbit helps you with that, where if you discard it for the cost of a G-Guardian, you can bind two heal triggers face up to counter charge or soul charge. So if I have the one face up, I G-Guard and attack, then I can counter charge and I have the two face up damage, meaning I'm set for Ultima. So, and also more counter charging, because why not? And it soul charges, so it helps now uh, to, if you already have the counter charge, you just want the soul charge to help pay costs for things that need soul blast. So Shaggy Rabbit is gonna come in handy when this ban list drops, so. Gonna run two and two. All right, G-Zone, yay. Two copies of Glorious, Glorious, <laughs> Golden Dragon, Spear X Dragon. So Spear X skill is G-Zone. If you're in Unite, your Vanguard's grade three, counter blast two, discard a card, stride from face down. More reason why I don't think we need Stride Fodder, because even if we can't Stride, you can just pay the Counter Blast 2, discard anything to Stride into Spear X, which is still a good Stride, because this other skill is Van once per turn, Soul Blast 1. Oh, that's another card that's Soul Blast, I guess. Uh, turn anything from your G Zone face up, look at five, tar five cards from the top of your deck, call two, and shuffle the rest back into your deck. So a good plus two that doesn't cause a Counter Blast. It's still really good, and it lets you stride for counter blast two, and your opponent doesn't matter what your opponent's grade is. So if your opponent gives you two damage while they're at grade one and you get into grade three, you can still stride. It's pretty busted. Next up, I'm running two copies of Absolute As Absolution Lion King Mithrazel. Uh The skill doesn't really matter, but I'll explain it anyways. Why I chose this as my flip fodder for Spear X. So, uh, Act once, act once per turn, counter blast, choose a copy of this card, turn face up. Uh, if you have a heart with Ezel, you will unlock all your cards, so it's anti-Link Joker, but because of glue ball, they get bound anyways. But again, I would rather have an open rear guard than a locked circle, so this helps still um, if you get your board unlocked. And then you look at the top five, call something, and then this, the Vanguard and the unit called gain power equal to the original power of the unit called. So if I called a Hoel, they both get 7k because Hoel's base is 7k. So, not amazing. It's flip fodder for the most part because you want to stride into literally everything else in your G zone. So, but hey, anti link joker, why not? Right? Next up, we are running four copies of Master Swordsman of First Light, Gurgit Helios. I was originally running Radiant Sword Gurgit, but that card soul blasted a bunch. And I, when I was playing the old build with Old Kirif, I had a bunch of soul because of White Lion and Hoel. So I'd have like eight in soul. So I would just like Counter Blast three, Soul Blast six, or Counter Blast four, Soul Blast eight. Just give everything a bunch of power. But because we're not trying to be that aggro with our soul conservation, I guess, we're just gonna run four Helios. So. Helios skills unite, uh, turn copy of this when you use them face up, drive plus one. So quad drive. Quad drive is always good. GB3, this gets 5k for each of your rear guards, and your opponent cannot call grade one or greater cards from their hand during the battle of this attack. 
This is really good against Luard matchups because they run Ezris with a grade 1 PG, meaning you'll stop them from using perfect guards. And because it's a big number and they have to G-guard, they have to G-guard more. Um, but against literally most other builds, that they pretty much run uh, the grade 0 PGs, kind of like how I'm running Mark. So it doesn't really do much against those, but it's mostly there for the quad drive. And it's free because all you have to do is call two things and you get a drive check. So more drive checks, more crits, more triggers in general. So more hand for Helios. Running two copies of Golden Dragon, Glorious Reigning Dragon. Skill is Counterblast 1, choose a copy of itself from the G-Zone, turn face up. When it attacks, you pick two of your rear guards, put them at the bottom of your deck, look at the top seven. From among those seven, you pick cards equal to the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone and call them. So if you have three face-up, you call three. Then if you called three or more cards from this skill, you can uh, soul charge and counter charge. So you're getting soul, you're getting the counter charge back from its own cost for calling things. And because we're running Horsa again, you, you guys remember when, when these two were, were, were really good with each other? Well, we're, we're back, we're back. We're back in 2016 era, or was it 2017? I forgot when GBT08 came out. Anyways. Glorious Raining, because multi-attacking is good, and we have a bunch of Excel markers we're going to abuse. Thank you, Wonder Ezel. Next up, one copy of Xeroth Dragon of Zenith Peak Ultima. Ultima will probably clutch you most of your games because it's so good, and it's ar arguably, in my opinion, the, the best in Gold Paladin because out of the United Sanctuary clans, um, Gold Paladin is the only one that's Excel, so... It has more options to give triggers to. So Ultima is the best in Gold Paladin, in my opinion. I know you can loop it in Gavrail with some thing. I don't know how exactly it does it, but consistency-wise, it's better in Ezel. So, or Gold in general. Kind of Blast 2, when it's placed, um, you search for four cards. Two of them get called to rear. The other two go to the top of your deck. And for the turn, uh, the triggers that you reveal during your drive check are applied to all your rear guards, or all your units. So pick horses and turtles you put two crits on top and you get 20k and three crit to everything and if you get you put the one stand on top and you attack with all your excel markers and your turtles you swing get the stand restand all your rear guards and then all the rear guards have extra crits because the other trigger you picked is going to be a crit so more pressure there as well i'm not running agnos in this deck because um you don't really need to worry about striding because you have Spear X, which lets you stride for the Unite cost. And I don't, from having used the card in the past, there would maybe be one or two games, maybe, that I would use the skill to throw down my board, draw some cards. But other than that, I would pretty much would rather save the uh, ultimate stride cost, which is what Agnos's cost was, basically, for Ultima. So I would rather pitch another grade three and just go into Helios and get a quad drive rather than having to think, hmm, do I want to drop my hand just to get a draw three and stride for free for the rest of the game? Or do I want to just go on to save it for Ultima? Because what I also found is that even after I used the Agnos, the next turn I would just go into Ultima. So that whole free stride was kind of pointless, you know? So we just dropped it completely and we're just running Ultima. On to the G Guardians. Two copies of Elise uh, from the reprint uh, from Revival Booster. Uh, GB1 when placed on guard, Canvas 1, choose a face down. Uh, G Guardian, turn face up. Look at top two cards, call one to Guardian Circle, the other one goes to bottom. And the called card gets the skill Guardian Circle. When the attack doesn't hit, you move it to Rear Guard Circle. So it does not activate on place abilities because moving and placing are not the same. So if you're thinking, if I call Dindrain and then move it to Rear, I can Soul Blast 1 and draw. No, you cannot. Because Dindrain does not go into effect when it's moved from one circle to another. It has to be placed from a zone that's not a circle. It just has to not be moved, basically. It has to say the word place. Two copies of Slimy Flare, because Slimy Flare be good. Slimy Flare pretty pretty dang good in this deck, because you got your grade one uh, 
10k shield thanks to V-Series, and you also got the 15k shield triggers thanks to V-Series, so Slamy Flare got a little bit of a boost. So now your triggers and your grade ones help with the shield. So what it does is you pick one of your rear guards from the bottom, look at the top five, call two from among those five to that have different grades to the guardian circle, and then you shuffle the rest back into your deck. So, and then you can use this to search out Mark and then PG. Easy. So it's Lamy Flare really good. Then I'm running one copy of Dismal. I was running Ratcomb originally because I thought I have the room and it's flip fodder for Elise. But I noticed I like Golden Beast Turtle a lot. And I noticed a lot of people want to kill it. So I'm just going to play Dismal so that they can't hurt it anymore. And then I don't have to worry about searching for another turtle. So easy. Uh, other than that, it's probably mostly flip fodder for Elise. But again, it's, it's there for the turtle. And maybe if I want to keep another rear guard but dismal was better than dismal's come in handy more than rack comb i would say and it has more of a use so that's pretty much it for the deck profile uh i don't think the deck has changed very much at all uh even with kirf's uh restriction as starting vanguard or the old kirf because you can still superior ride pretty consistently Wonder Ezel still does great for you. Um, the deck might be a little slowed down a little bit as far as its consistency goes, but the point of the deck to get Wonder Ezel and then go into Ultima still functions just fine. Um, that's my hot take on the ban list and Gold Paladin. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the premium post ban list deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next video. I'm Richard, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye.